Hi everybody, sorry I started a little bit late today. Uh, Hannah has her once a month D&D uh, &D game, so she is not going to be reading with me tonight, so okay, it's just me. So yeah, it was a lot of books to read, so <laughs> I was a little bit late in starting. Alright, well, let's start with Independence first. Ouch, man, I've got a foot cramp. Please forgive me. Alright, let's start with the cool Valiant stuff. Um, okay, so you know and for the Valiant Universe, or maybe you don't, that uh, there's a cool place called Deadside, and that's the place where you usually see Shadow Man. Um, and we haven't talked about Deadside in a really long time in the Marvel Universe, uh, sorry, the Valiant Universe years. It has been mostly talking about, uh, we've been doing a lot of Exo Man of War, and Rai, and those guys, and Faith. So this is a good look into the dead side. Uh, there's a character in here that is trying to uh, find a way to protect the real world, or the live side, uh, from this guy named Babel, who's a magician who's going to try to create something to destroy everything. So really cool. I mean, if you haven't read anything with Ninjak in it, it's a good introduction to Ninjak, good introduction to Shadow Man. Enjoy it. It's called Rapture, and it's the first one. And then, uh, all our awesome favorite, uh, Exo Man of War. This is number three. This is the end of the first story arc called Soldier, uh, in which you're, he's still fighting Cadmium, and he's been double-crossed multiple times by the guys who are making him fight, and this is kind of like the end of that story arc. Um, it ends very interestingly. But the thing that I love about this series is not so much the breadth of which it's discussing for storyline, because it's not. I mean, it's like this little snippet of time. But the art, oh my gosh, the art is killer. All right, and what I didn't get to read, but I totally will, I always like to mention it when it comes out, because I love Jeff Lemire's work. Uh, Black Hammer, number, we're going to be up to nine. And it looks like there's the origin of Walkie Talkie, Talkie Walkie in this book. So I, every single time I read a uh, new issue of Black Hammer in my mind explodes because I think I know what's going on, but I don't. So, if you've never read any of Black Hammer, I'm sure there's a first trade out. You should jump in. Uh, from Boom, uh, Victor Laval's Destroyer. So, if you are a fan of uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, this will appeal to you. The story starts out describing uh, the original Frankenstein that's been in stories before. Um, but then kind of jumps to the future and we meet a scientist uh, who has uh, her, one of her children has passed away and she is going to use his heart to create something new, which is really cool. Uh, and we've been waiting for this for a long time. If you've been paying attention online, there was a, some fan, super fan, obviously, created a, like, their own trailer for if this book became a show, and it was amazing. So I don't want to say too much about the book because there is a huge twist in it, that the big payoff at the end. But uh, just know that this uh, is about a family, and uh, their uh, son falls out of a treehouse, and when he falls, uh, they see that there's something electric in the back of his head. And so they uh, go on, they kind of run away to go and try to figure out what is going on. Because quite clearly, they would have noticed if their son had electronics in his head before. Because, um, you know, he's old enough for them to notice those things. All right. Uh, Donny Cates, we love you. Uh, if you like rednecks and vampires, this is the book for you. So this is about... This is called Redneck. A little more insight into how the family works within the town that they live in. Um, in the last issue, one of their own has died, and they are having him buried. Uh, they've got a couple familiars that they work with. So a familiar is a real-life human that does the bidding of the vampires in exchange for you know, help. And so uh, things kind of come to a head at the end of this issue in regard to how they're getting along with the people in the town. They're still not really sure if one of their own has done something terrible, and they're trying to figure out, because that person doesn't know, they can't remember anything, so. <clears throat> really great book. You can still probably find number ones around, too. All right, DC Goodness. 
All right, uh, don't trust the front of this book because, like usual, the art doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what's on the inside. So this is uh, Action Comics number 980. This one deals primarily with the um, aftermath of the Kents leaving the farm. They've run away to go live in the city. Um, and Superman's trying to find a way to restart life, even though he knows that uh, a big group of uh, really big baddies are after him, including Cyborg, and they've kind of like pulled in a bunch of other nefarious bad guys that he's fought before and or thought has been ki has killed. And so he's just got to figure out how to get through all of this. Uh, a title I don't usually read, but I am familiar with, The Justice League of America. This one's kind of a sweet little issue. It's dealing a lot with Killer Frost, and uh, they are trying to find a way to cure her of her, um, I think it's called heat sickness. I guess that if she, the way she stays cold is she robs other people of their, that has to be cold, right? But it does damage to them, permanent damage to them. So they're just trying to find some way. And they come across bad guys that are trying to do something completely the opposite. So, And then uh, this storyline has been really cool. And Hal Jordan, you've got uh, the Green Lanterns have joined together with all the Yellow Lanterns, the Sinestro, Sinestro Corps. And they've been working really well together. But as a result of... Um, uh, not Kyle. Mm, my brain just broke. Not Guy, guy Gardner either. Oh, the main guy. Hal Jordan. Hal, uh, he actually formed uh, his, a new ring for himself out of willpower using this... <laughs> my cat's looking like, oh, that's funny. Uh, using a technology that he should not have been touching. And it resulted in a creature being made out of his willpower. And all of the core are trying to fight creatures, many, many creatures that are also formed out of willpower and kind of have their own powers that they're throwing back at them. So all of the rangers have to fight with no rings. So imagine such things. They, resort, they have got to resort to guns and stuff. It doesn't work so well. And... Uh, we have been looking forward to reading second issue of Jean Grey because in the first issue of Jean Grey, despite her saying over and over again that she's not the Jean Grey that has anything to do with this and that, including the Phoenix, um, we find out that the little voice in her head that's been talking to her is in fact the Phoenix. So in this issue, she's trying to figure out um, where the Phoenix is and despite her being insistent that's, that she has really heard from the Phoenix, the rest of her team doesn't believe her. That's really, really not good. And X-Men Blue, uh, I remember in the last issue, you have what appears to be a clawed uh, wild man <laughs> fighting Wendigo and defeating it. Uh, and we've always assumed that this is probably Logan, but just know it's not. So there's a twist in this book. And... Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much more. There's some really good stuff in there, but I don't want to like get too far ahead. All right, and really, really cool things. Uh, Venom issue 150. Uh, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I just read number five or something. Uh, they have gone back to legacy numbering for this book. Um, it's really cool. There's three stories in here. Uh, first one deals a lot with Eddie Brock. It's really kind of cool to see inside his relationship with uh, the symbiote. And there's lots of variant covers for that out there too, so have fun hunting. All right, and uh, Mighty Cap Captain Marvel number five will feel a little bit familiar to you because it uh, kind of is a touchstone to the uh, Ultimates 2 that came out uh, last week, but it's another view of the battle against Hydra, uh, specifically from the viewpoint of Captain Marvel. Uh, she's got a huge team that's with her. Uh, they're all still trying to figure out how to defeat the Jatari and realize they've been double-crossed. Uh, the cutest of all the books that are tied in it to the Secret Empire storyline is going to be Secret Warriors, because of course it's got Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, and uh, Miss Marvel, and <laughs> a bevy of, like, uh, my favorite part of this entire book actually is you have, um, uh, 
oh my gosh, <laughs> Karnak sitting in the back seat of the car, and uh, he calls for the middle back seat, and they're like trying to explain to him that no one calls the middle back seat in the car. He's, but of course he says it's the safest place. The, the least amounts of injuries happen if you're in the center back seat. So uh, they're basically trying to get together, I think, with um, all of the Jean Grey group that are actually trying to fight. Like the resi they're like the resistance against Captain America and the Hydra crew. And last but not least, you got Steve Rogers, Captain America, number 17. He's in full Hydra gear in this one. If you like reading books in which you think to yourself, there's no way someone could possibly have plans this far in advance and have them all so beautifully orchestrated and that they're playing people like fiddles. This will let you know even more that Steve has been thinking things through for a long time. He's got everybody right where he wants them. And you also see how severe his, uh, like if you break his rules, what happens. So that's it this week. I tried to read Wonder Woman, but I ran out of time. Uh, go find a local comic shop near you. You can look at uh, comicbooklocator.com if you want to find where they are. Uh, next week, Hannah will be back with me. And we'll be really tired because we'll be back from a convention. So <laughs> hope we see all you guys there. Love you guys and see you next week. Bye.